Hello everyone, Soprano Theories here and welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone for all the recent support that the channel has gotten over the last couple of weeks as we are approaching almost 30,000 subscribers, which is absolutely unbelievable. To think that a little side hobby over the pandemic and a lifetime Sopranos passion could turn into 30,000 subscribers and 3 million total views is insane. Seriously, the support is unbelievable, thank you all so much. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by the Falls View Keg Steakhouse and Bar, located on the 9th floor of the Embassy Suites in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Enjoy fantastic quality steaks and wine alongside a breathtaking view of Niagara Falls. Book your stay now at the Embassy Suites Hotel to receive a $30 coupon. The link will be in the description below. As always, be sure to click subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all upcoming Sopranos content and the many Saints of Newark content as well. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Links will be in the description below. When it came to Dickie Moltisanti, Soprano fans knew very little about Christopher's late father and Tony's supposed legendary mafia mentor. Outside of Season 4's pilot episode, For All Debts Public and Private, where a few myths and stories were passed down to Christopher through the grapevine via Tony about the alleged murder of Dickie Moltisanti, Sopranos fans never really knew much about Christopher's late father and Tony's mentor. According to Tony, Dickie was a stand-up guy, one who was loyal and committed to La Cosa Nostra. But in the eyes of Christopher, he was simply too young when Dickie died to have any recollections of his father. With The Many Saints of Newark releasing earlier this month, Soprano fans were finally treated to the supposed legendary tale of Dickie Moltisanti. Was Tony right in Dickie being this loyal, legendary old-school mafia figure? Or was he lying the entire time to Christopher in Season 4? This video will contain spoilers for The Many Saints of Newark, so if you haven't seen the film yet, I suggest you watch the film first before you watch this video. When we're first introduced to Dickie Moltisanti, we learn that he was an associate in the DeMeo crime family in Newark. Dickie ran a numbers racket alongside Johnny Boy and Uncle Junior. Also in their crew was Polly, Silvio, and Big Pussy. During a confrontation in the film, we learn that Dickie had a difficult upbringing as a child, as his father, Hollywood Dick Moltisanti, would beat him and his mother often growing up. The Many Saints of Newark revolves around the Newark Race Riots that took place in the summer of 1967. This resulted in an absurd amount of violence taking place throughout the city and also some racial tension between Blacks and Italians. Despite the racial tension, Moltisanti established a work relationship with a Black associate, Harold McBrayer. The two had previously established a relationship from the two playing football together in high school. As the film continues, we see Dickie get into an argument with his father. In an outburst of rage and a loss of temper, Dickie shockingly kills his own father. Whether it was on purpose, an accidental burst of rage, or a way in to have his father's wife, Josephina, no matter what his reasoning was, Dickie killed his own father. It's this moment here where it seems to be the beginning of the end of Dickie Moltisanti, and the beginning of his downfall, as everything after this moment just adds to Dickie's demise. Upon the realization of killing his own father, we can see the shock, disappointment, and fear in the eyes of Dickie. But also at the same time, we can see the themes of relief and satisfaction once he burned his father's body alive in the auto body shop. As the film continues, so does Dickie's journey, but this time without his father. And much like Tony visiting Dr. Melfi for therapy in The Sopranos, we can see the same parallels here in The Many Saints of Newark. This being when Dickie makes multiple visits to his uncle Sally in jail, which just so happens to be his father's identical twin brother. In The Sopranos, we watch Dickie's son, Christopher, be worried about his arc in life. Whether it was contemplating leaving the Mafia to pursue a career as a screenwriter, or constantly being in fear from the dark path that revolves around the Mafia that usually results in death, Christopher was worried about his identity, his relationship with Tony, and his purpose in life. Ironically, in The Many Saints of Newark, we sort of see the same character arc in Christopher's father, Dickie. As Dickie uses his weekly meetings with his uncle Sally to discover his true self and his purpose in life. Interestingly enough, Dickie wanting to do a good deed in life and him coaching blind children in baseball eerily mirrors Tony's mindset and attitude once he recovered from his coma, as Tony took his recovery as a blessing. As Tony looked at every day representing a gift and wanting to be a better person in life. 
And this is much like Dickie wanting to do a good deed and being the proper influence for a young Tony Soprano. As the film progresses, so does the hate towards Moltisanti, as Dickie continues to rise up the ranks within the Mafia and gaining respect from his fellow colleagues like Johnny Boy Soprano. However, this also results in Dickie gaining his fair share of enemies. The first being Harold McBrayer. As little did Dickie know, McBrayer would ultimately be the linchpin towards his downfall. With McBrayer acting as Moltisanti's muscle and enforcer and doing all the risky and dangerous jobs for Dickie that we see throughout the film, McBrayer seemingly had enough of Moltisanti's control and also the racism towards African Americans by the Italians. We see McBrayer turn on his lifelong friend in Moltisanti after he is forced in order to kill one of his own gangbangers in Leon Overall. The murder of Overall forces McBrayer and Moltisanti's relationship to come to an abrupt end. As McBrayer grows tired of the Italian control within Newark and specifically in the black neighborhoods. This results in McBrayer targeting Moltisanti and his crew throughout the film. Along with McBrayer despising against Moltisanti, Dickie's girlfriend and basically his stepmother Josepina also sides with Harold against Moltisanti. After contemplating to go into business at the beauty parlor with Josepina, Dickie reluctantly agrees on being partners with her. However, little did Dickie know that Josepina sneakily went into business with McBrayer and had been sleeping with him behind his back. With Dickie full of shock, disbelief, anger, and feeling like he was stabbed in the heart by Josepina, an enraged Dickie drowns Josepina. A similar death out of rage that we saw earlier in the film when Dickie killed his own father. It's this scene here that is the true downfall of Dickie Moltisanti, as he has completely lost who he is and was when we first saw him in the beginning of the film. Moltisanti has changed completely, as he tries to become a better individual and influence for his nephew, but yet he continues to steer him towards a life of crime which we know Tony followed. The last and most important enemy that Dickie gained along his journey was Uncle Junior. Earlier on in the film, when Johnny Boy Soprano returned from jail, we saw him resent Junior's leadership while he was away. Johnny Boy Soprano went on praising the work ethic of Dickie, and we can see here from this conversation that Junior begins to resent Dickie. There are other scenes throughout the film that display the resentment that Junior carries towards Dickie, much like this dinner scene here and when Junior tries to talk to a young Tony Soprano but Livia tells him that he'll only listen to Dickie. Towards the end of the film, at a funeral, we watch Uncle Junior slip and fall and seriously injure his back. While trying to get up, Dickie can't help but laugh uncontrollably and mock Junior. This teasing by Dickie was evidently the final straw for Dickie to be killed in the eyes of Uncle Junior. While it's unclear what the motive was for Junior behind the Moltisanti murder, it's quite possible that a motive Junior had to kill Dickie was a way to get closer to Tony. And when it comes to who pulled the trigger, this too remains a mystery, as we can't fully get a clear-cut look at the perpetrator. While Tony said to Christopher in season 4, or that it was a crooked cop in Barry Haidu, from what we can see from the film, it's quite possible that Haidu's desperate screams of Christopher being lied to and set up were true. Christopher always had this image of his father being nothing more than a junkie, despite him having no recollections of his father due to Dickie dying while he was just an infant. But from what we can see in the film, outside of a scene or two, Dickie never really abuses himself with any drugs or alcohol the way Christopher did. And it's just a mere coincidence that when Dickie dies, he just so happens to have pills in his pocket. I would love to hear your thoughts about the story of Dickie Moltisanti in The Many Saints of Newark. Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this downfall video, be sure to click like and click subscribe for more. For more Sopranos themed content and the Many Saints of Newer content, keep it locked here, right here on this channel.